Hi, my name is Nicole and I'm on a mission to find the best boba in the world. This episode, I'm traveling all the way to, wait, no, wait a second, we're not traveling anywhere because I'm in my hometown of LA for part one of the California boba journey. LA is packed full of people, tons of traffic, and a lot of different boba shops. Because of this, and because I'm from LA, we're gonna be doing a few episodes on California boba. This specific episode is gonna be focused on a couple shops that have been around for years, and a couple that have just opened up. Our first stop takes us to downtown LA, specifically Little Tokyo. Twinkle Brown Sugar is owned by four friends, all from Taiwan, and they've been bringing the tea tradition of Taiwan to LA since 2012. The first drink is called a mango yo-yo. There's rainbow jelly at the bottom and a mango flavored yogurt drink. It's something you don't really see in a lot of boba shops. This next drink is the reason I wanted to include Twinkle Brown Sugar in the series. It's called the Twinkle Fruit Tea and it's made with jasmine tea, house-made pineapple juice, and fresh fruits, depending on the season. Normally it has mango, strawberry, and honeydew, but other times they have kiwi. Drink number three is called the brown sugar milk tea. It has boba, pudding, some whipped cream, and syrup on top. This drink is super decadent and the brown sugar in the tea is what makes this one different from an average milk tea. This is their strawberry flavored milk tea. On the bottom, there's strawberry flavored boba, regular boba, and lychee. The boba is the same texture as regular boba, they just flavor them differently. The same concept can be seen here with the blue citrus flavored and red strawberry flavored boba and lemonade. All their lemonades were super refreshing and of course, Perfect for photos. This last drink is called the Rose Gold Lemonade. There's no rose, there's no gold. Is there rose? There is rose, never mind, sorry. Take two. Citrus flavored boba, rose syrup, and some sprinkles and lemonade. It doesn't look rose gold at all, but apparently this is popular among the youth. That's what they told me, I don't know. The Twinkle Fruit Tea is the drink that brought me to this shop, but today they gave me a lot of interesting variations of boba. The head chef has been creating new recipes for 30 years, and the shop has been at it for nearly 10. Heading out from Little Tokyo, I stayed in downtown LA, a place I try to avoid as much as I can. It's home to the infamous Skid Row, way too many one-way streets, confusing parking signs, and the one and only place I've been towed. You see the things I do for good boba? But on this day, I made sure to read all the parking signs and I headed into Little Fluffyhead, a shop that's been open for less than one year. Little Fluffyhead is serving up the new trend known as cheese tea. The owner, Anne, describes it as a refreshing tea base with a whipped cream cheese topping. Their unique drinks have been featured on NBC, BuzzFeed, LA Eater, Refinery, and more. So I really wanted to see what the hype was about. So I went back to Asia, uh, specifically China, about two years ago. And back then, I think cheesy was already a, a trendy drink for the millennials. It was so surprisingly good that it was well-balanced. And back then, no one in the States have ever heard of the word cheesy, not even tried the cheesy yet. So I have decided to you know, bring back the recipe, the concept, and then share it with my neighborhood, my friends here. Rose tea is something I would never order. I don't really like floral teas, but I've come all the way to downtown LA specifically for this rose oolong many, many times. I mean, it was like three, but <laughs> it's subtle rose flavored mixed with strong tea and creamy cheese on top. Cream, creamy cheese, or is it cream cheese? I don't know. It's cream, creamy cream cheese. <laughs> That sounds really weird. Anyways, cheese tea is happening in a lot of places, but this rose oolong has to be one of my favorites. Drink number two is called the Cheddar Cha Matcha. After loving the rose oolong, I was feeling adventurous, so I decided to try it. If you've seen the other videos, you know I don't like matcha, but I love cheese, so maybe I'd like this one? That wasn't the case. This drink is made with matcha with cheese foam on top, but what's different is this has small chunks of white cheddar cheese. As much as I love cheese, I could not drink this one at all. It was really weird, but maybe if I at one point become an advanced cheese tea drinker, I'll try it again, but probably not. Drink three was cheeseless, but not matcha-less. It's called the camouflage. It's matcha-based with whipped creme brulee inside. It swirled around the cup to give it the cool camo look. I did try the drink, but I'll let my matcha lover describe it. The Dirty Mess milk tea was also cheeseless. It's milk tea with whipped creme brulee and Oreo. 
The whipped creme brulee topping gives it a salty taste mixed with a sweet milk tea and Oreo, balancing sweet and savory. I would say it tastes like a salty milkshake. Is Pasadena considered LA? Yes. Cause that's where we headed to next. With six locations around California, a line that's constantly out the door, and unlimited ways to customize your drinks, Tea Pumps has something for everyone. Whenever I come to Tea Pumps, I get something different, and somehow it's always really good. There's no fixed menu at Tea Pumps, so customers can mix and match. Haichu basically is a mixture of uh, raspberry and mango. Um, so with that flavor, you really get a, a good taste of uh, uh, like the bubblegum haichu or the candy. Tea Pump's boba has always been soft and chewy and full of sweet flavor. Alex explains that the boba cooks for two hours. Cook it with the Tea Pump's love. <laughs> What's cool is that toppings are included in the price of your drink, but I always get extra boba, obviously. Tea Pumps actually opened as a loose leaf tea shop just selling the teas, but after seeing how popular boba was becoming, Alex decided to transform it into a boba shop. Now this is something called boba bran. We have a customer who doesn't like the texture of a boba, so this is a good choice. Uh, we call it boba brand. So basically it's a basil seed. This is a good choice for people who want to have a topping, something to chew on, but uh, without the texture of a, a regular boba. Since I'm always getting something different and new here, I didn't want to include a specific favorite. You just have to come here and try something for yourselves, and the employees are always super helpful in making recommendations. Our final location for this episode brings us to Westwood, near UCLA, to SIP. Owned by a team of four including food blogger Jun Kwan, aka Stir and Style, these guys are serving up matcha in many different ways. So these are my partners, my fiance Dan, and then Anna and Jeremy. And they are married, so we are two couples creating these businesses together, and it has been a whirlwind, but we love it. I know, I know, Nicole, why are you at a matcha place if all you do is complain about how much you don't like matcha? I don't have a good reason for why, I, I wish I did, but it looked cool so I wanted to go and I brought my matcha master with me, my sister-in-law, Brenda. So a little background about me, I am an attorney by trade, but I quit my job to pursue my passion in fruit. I started my food blog Stir and Style about three and a half years ago and met my fiance and our two partners and we started SIP. The blueberry matcha milk tea is something I've come back to SIP for so many times since shooting this episode. The blueberry taste kind of masks the matcha, which is probably why I like it so much, but I definitely recommend it for something unique. The next drink is the magic matcha and I'll let June explain what that is. The top layer is beet and then we have turmeric and then matcha on the bottom. So not only is it beautiful, but it is great for your health. also have matcha soft serve and something called oni matcha. In Japan, a rice ball is called onigiri, but they call it oni matcha because the rice is made with matcha and they have lots of different fillings from salmon to spam and egg. We went to places that have been killing the boba game for years and to some new ones that are just now joining in on the party. LA is full of boba, new shops and old school ones, so we're gonna keep searching and bring you more parts to the LA boba episode. If you have a favorite shop you want us to check out, leave it in the comments below and we'll see what we can do. See you in the next city.